I typically think long and hard about what I'm going to sing so that it correlates with the sermon, and over and over this song kept coming into my mind. And I know that someone here needs to hear it. Um, God gives us messages lots of different ways, and music can be one of them, so I hope that the lyrics will be meaningful to you. I cannot wrap my mind around the love of God, but what I know is that whether you are coming in here today because you feel deeply connected to him, or whether you are coming in today and you are feeling very separated from him because of a choice that you've made or something that you've done or, or questions that you have because he did not come through in a moment that you needed him to, that you prayed for him to. God has never, ever loved you more.
Thank you again, Wendy. Appreciate it so much. Let's pray. Father, as you know, as I look out over all these people, some I know better than others, but I know the needs are incredible. And Father, if I didn't believe that you were the one that did this work, I could never stand here. I am woefully inadequate to do this. So again, Father, I trust you, we trust you, that you will speak to us through your word. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. There are many beautiful words in the world. Here are, here are a few. You can trust me. Isn't it nice when someone says that? I won't let you down. Particularly at a time that you're going through a lot. It's wonderful for somebody to say that. I care for you. Also be very encouraging. And I want to help you. But what are the most beautiful words in the universe? Many would say, well, that's easy. The most, the most beautiful wor words in the universe are three, I love you. But are those? Those are beautiful words, no question. But are those the most beautiful words? And although I've, I've uh, talked about several phrases, are any of those the most beautiful words in the universe? I would say no. And I'll tell you why in the next few minutes. See if you agree with me at the end. Let's turn to Matthew 11 and start in verse 28. Matthew 11, 28, famous passage. Come to me. You know, I, I usually read out of the New King James, but the King James is just so beautiful sometimes, isn't it? It really is. Come unto me sounds better, but anyway, come to me. All who are, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek or gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke or burden, my yoke, sorry, is easy, and my burden is light. Everybody has to carry a burden. You say, no, I don't. You carry a burden of one kind or another. It's part of being human. It's part of being alive. You carry a burden. But the burden of self and sin is a heavy burden. What happens when you try to carry something that is too heavy? Eventually, your arms begin to ache, don't they? And then eventually your, your legs start to hurt. And finally, and when this happens, that's it. Finally, it's your back. And you start looking for somewhere to put down this burden. And if you try to carry it too far this heavy burden, or for too long, you will be injured. It will break you. Years ago, when I moved to Berrien Springs to go to seminary, the, the few months before it started, I got a job doing tree work, where you would, I've talked about this before, where you would Trim trees, cut down trees, 
remove limbs that are hanging over power lines or over people's houses or wherever they didn't want them. And you wore the spur and the saddle. That's what we called it. You know, it was a strap. And you had these spurs that were attached to your leg. And you would dig them into the tree as you climbed up. And you would use the the strap leaning back. And then when you got in position, of course, you would start your chainsaw. And then, you know, it's, it's a dangerous thing. You're up there with this running chainsaw. And uh, depending on how heavy the branch or the top of the tree is, when you cut it off, that changes the balance of the tree. So sometimes, if you top it off, the tree goes back and forth for a while. But, and you're up there with this chain, and you're going like this. And you're thinking, boy, if I fall with a running chainsaw, oh, <laughs> a lot of scary moments. But anyway, it was a day that we had already cut down a tree, and uh, we had cut it up, and we were, we were moving the logs into a truck to haul it away. And these weren't split. It wasn't like the nice little cute logs you put in your fireplace or your wood stove, or you can carry six or seven of them with no problem. This was, these were some of them, heavy, heavy logs. And you know, when you're young, you think you're Superman or Superwoman. And you look at a heavy weight, especially a young man, oh, I can do that. And so we're picking up these heavy logs and we're walking over to the truck and we're stepping up into the truck. And as you know, when you have that one foot raised, all the weight has to shift pretty much to the other side, right? Or you'll fall over. And, of course, your body and brain knows naturally to do that. Well, I picked up this one log that was too heavy. And I'm carrying it, and I, my mind said, well, I only have to go a few feet. And I'm struggling with this thing. And when I went to step up into the truck, then it happened. It was like it felt, this is the best way I can describe it, and some of you have experienced this, it was like somebody had clamped a vice on my lower back and just squeezed it for all it was worth. And all of a sudden I gasped, I couldn't breathe, and I, of course, dropped the log. I staggered away from the truck and fell face down and had the most searing pain in my lower back I've ever had. I couldn't move. I couldn't hardly even say anything. Well, when I got home, I knew something was really, really wrong. And I took off my shirt, and I looked in the mirror, and I was crooked. And uh, for the next six months, it hurt to sit. It hurt to stand. It hurt to walk. And it was just bad, bad, bad. Well, eventually it got a little bit better. But three years later, this is how bad it was, three years later I noticed when I got in my first church that when I would walk, my right leg would drag behind me. It was going numb. And I asked some people, and you know, people sometimes, they're not very encouraging. I don't know. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I, I'm, about, I'm about 30 years old, and I said, what should I do? And they go, you're going to have to have surgery. And I went, oh, I'm too young to have surgery. So I found a way, doing some stretching, to relieve it enough that the numbness was not as bad, and eventually it went away. But... I am still suffering from that to to a certain extent. It broke me, broke my my condition of my body as I get to the age I am now, it seems, for the rest of my life. My back will never be the same. Make the best of it, right? Do what you can. But it was... Too heavy a burden for me to carry. Too many of us are carrying a load, weight, or burden 
that is too heavy for us. The burden of self-will, the burden of sin. We, we are proud of all the things we are doing, and, and, uh, but our life sometimes just seems so hard, and we're carrying this burden that God never intended us to carry. And yet some of us brag about how we can carry this heavy burden. And God looks at us, and he sees our arms getting tired, our legs getting weaker, and our back giving out. And he says, why are you doing that? Why are you carrying that burden? Because... My burden is light, and my yoke is easy. It's easier to go through life as a Christian than it ever is to go without him. The burdens of life, I don't know how people do it. But some of us, even as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, sometimes... We are not, maybe, maybe more than sometimes, we are not carrying the burden of Jesus, the light, easy one. Those are his words, aren't they? His words. We're carrying the heavy burden of our own choices, our own self-will. And it's breaking us. He says, come to him. Drop the burden that you're carrying and pick up his. And we'll say, ah, oh, this is nice. I can do this. I can carry this forever. In fact, this burden is, there's something about it. It's almost like it's, it's invigorating to carry this. It's actually strengthening me. That's the one Jesus wants us to carry. Do you want to know the four most beautiful words in the universe? If you read the bulletin, it's there. Thy will be done. The satanic church, the modern satanic church that was started about 50 years ago, by Anton LaVey, who is dead now, but some of you have heard of him, and they have chapters all over the world. They have a satanic Bible that they have written. And this is, this is a telling point how some people just don't under, really understand the enemy. If you ask most people, what, what is the mantra or the motto of the satanic church? And a lot of people would say, Kill, steal, rob, be evil, be bad, all of that. That's not the motto. <laughs> you know what the motto is? He's trying, to, he's trying to copy the Bible by using the Old English. He says, the motto is, do what thou wilt. Do what you want. Let's go to the well-known story, Genesis 3. Genesis 3. And I mentioned this in the first service, but I, I need to say it again. You know, we go back to the same verses sometimes over and over and over, but you know, there are lots of different things you can get out of the same verse. Right? Some people have the attitude, we've got to be careful of this. You say, well, I've read that before. I know that. I know that. So I don't need to read it. You know what that's like? That's like saying, I've had that dish before. I've eaten before. I don't need to eat. I've done that. I've been there, done that. I hate that phrase, by the way. <laughs> it's so condescending. But anyway. Yeah, we've gone here before. You've gone here before. And, and there's a lot of things you can get out of these first few uh, verses in Genesis 3, and that's wonderful. I want to focus on one. Genesis 3, now the serpent, verse 1, was more cunning. 
than any beast of the field, and of course we know this is the devil, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. So let's, let's put it in modern language. So, so Eve says, God says this, and the devil's basically saying, don't do what God says, do what you want to do. Isn't that the crux of every single temptation? The Holy Spirit is saying, do what God wants you to do. And we're tempted to say, I want to do what I want to do. That's everything. Why did I say thy will be done are the most beautiful words in the universe? What if Eve, when the serpent talked to her, what if she, instead of doing what she did, what if she said, nope, serpent, thy will be done? Where would we be today? What if Lucifer, in his hour of temptation in heaven, had said, instead of what he did say, Lord, thy will be done. Oh. Now some people say, well, we, we never would have seen the love of God. We never would have this and that. Yeah, but... But yes, yes, that's, that's true. Those are all wonderful things. But think of all of the millions eternally lost. So if Eve had said, thy will be done, if Lucifer had said, thy will be done, how different everything would be. Think of all the times in your life when you didn't say those words and now looking back, you realize how much better off you would have been if you had said those words. You know that time you're alone, tempted to have these evil, dark thoughts, selfish thoughts, whatever it is. And we tell ourselves, oh, it's easier to do what I want than to do what God wants. It never is, not really. But we, we, we believe that. And instead of, and, and, it's that, and it's that moment, and it's all going on in our head, the great controversy in our head, and it's, do I do what I want to do? Do I do what God wants me to do? Do I do what I want to do? Do I do what God wants me to do? And eventually we make, a, we make a choice, don't we? And if you're a Christian, and I assume if you're sitting here, you're a Christian, and we look back on those times, and they may not be very long ago. They may be, they may be yesterday. They may be this morning. And just going on percentages, it could be two minutes ago. But we have those choices and we, we make our choice. Thy will be done or my will be done. And think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. What if he had not said those words? He's there at his, at his, his most difficult hour of his life. And he's struggling, and the Bible says he's sweating drops of blood. And he said to the disciples, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Now that's depression. We're told in the spirit of prophecy that, that after he had made the decision that if an angel had not come and strengthened him, he would have died on the spot.
But where, where would we be? If Jesus, in, in, in realizing that he was going to be identified with sin, and the devil saying to him, and the devil was right next to him. You know that, don't you? You know that. Whispering in his ear, or however, God do, however the devil does it, gets in our head. I don't know how he does it. I don't really care, but he does it somehow, right? But he's whispering to him, you will forever be identified with sin. This blackness, this gulf between your father and you that you are experiencing right now, it's forever, Jesus, son. He probably said this sarcastically. Son of God. You know he hates Jesus. Mortal enemy. Hates him. But at that moment, as Jesus is there trembling and, and he is, he is being removed from God. There is a gulf between them because he is suffering in our place, right? What if he had said, Father, he, we know he said, let the cup pass away. In other words, I don't want to do this. What if he had said, though, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do what I want to do. This is too much for me. I can't be separated from you like this. I'm going back to heaven. What if he had said that? We would have no hope. The whole universe would have been thrown into chaos. Do you realize that? You say, well, why would that be? Because... There would have been doubt among the angels and the unfallen worlds in God's love. Oh, he says he loves us, but he will only go so far. Everything would have been different. Lucifer, to a certain extent, would have been proven right. Think how terrible that is. I can't think of anything worse than that. But Jesus did say those words. The most beautiful words that were ever uttered. These words are greater even than the phrase, I love you. Because God says, I love you to everyone all the time. He loves everyone, even the rebels, even the lost, even Lucifer. But unless the person hearing those words learns to say in response, Thy will be done, they are lost. Are they not? God still loves them. People, I hope nobody here thinks that the ones that are lost, God doesn't love them. That's not Bible theology. That's human theology. God loves them all. But Jesus did say those words, praise God. You and I need to learn to say those words more than we do. Saying those words makes our burden so much lighter and easier. Rather than saying, as we do, my will be done. Isn't it funny? We always think it's better. I say always, often. How about that? We often think it's better to do it our way. You know? And sometimes in the short run, it appears we were right. But never in the long run, does it? It's always something we regret later. Nobody at their deathbed would ever say, speaking, I'm speaking as a father, husband, I'm glad I played golf every weekend. I'm glad I didn't spend much time with my kids. Who would say that on their deathbed? Nobody would ever say that. I'm glad I worked those long hours and my wife and my relationship grew cold. I'm glad that I barely know my kids and what's going on in my life. I'm glad that they hardly talk to me today as adults. And, and if I had my life to do over again, I'd do it the same. Nobody says that. If they do, they're crazy. You 
You know, carrying the burden which has the motto, my will be done, my will be done, that's a burden too heavy for us. It really is. Because in the end, it will break us. In music, if you're a musician or you've studied music, um, you know that in all good music, I can't say everything that's ever been written, but in all good music, it has a point at which some would call the crescendo or the peak. And the early part of the song is building towards that peak, isn't it? And then when you reach it, it's hopefully, if it's a good song and it resonates with you, it, you get a, a rush of feeling as it gets to that peak. And then after that, it winds down. And that peak could be in the exact middle. It could be, it could be, it could be toward the beginning, although not very often. And often it's near the end of the song. The crescendo... <laughs> The peak of the great controversy was in that little garden, in that little country, 2,000 years ago, before dawn, we call it the Garden of Gethsemane, in the spring of 31 AD, where Jesus was alone clutching the ground. That was the crescendo, the peak of the great controversy. The entire great controversy hinged on Jesus saying those four words. The entire universe is saved by those four words. Without them, if he had said, my will be done, and gone back to heaven, the universe and everyone in it would have fallen off the precipice. Those four words are the most important, powerful, beautiful words ever uttered. And you can see Jesus as he's there in that moment and the whole world is, is listening. What's he going to say? The whole universe, that is. And it, it, amazing as it sounds, most of the world that early morning had no idea anything significant was going on, did they? The disciples didn't even. They fell asleep. Okay, we'll pray for you, but I'm so tired. I'm not, I'm not saying I would do any better than they, are, than they did. I'm not saying that. But praise his name, he said those words. And part of him didn't want to. He, he asked three times to get out of it. Father, my will is not to do this. Father, my will is not to do this. Could you please? I've done everything else you've said. Could you please not make me do this? But finally, he said those words. There's a song, and I don't, I don't have it uh, for them to play, and maybe I should have, but anyway, it's, it's a song on the radio, and I forget the artist's name. It's, it's a lady. But the, the, the main phrase of it is, thy will be done. Some of you may have heard, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Hopefully you and I can get to the point that we say those words all the time. 